gentlemen would find a seat. We're going to go ahead and uh, get started here in about 30 seconds here. If we can get going. Go ahead and call the uh, meeting uh, to order here on this July the 2nd. 2020. It kind of sounds scary, 2020, but I um, appreciate everyone staying here with us through the work session and uh, and through our meeting. As always, before we start, uh, we uh, ask Brother Golf here to lead us in prayer and pledge of allegiance. If everyone would stand, please. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, as always, thank you for uh, where we live. We thank you for the beautiful place we call home, our friends, our families, our industries, our our schools, everything that makes this place what it is. And we know Lord, we're in a terrible time, as we've said before, with the COVID and now with the rioting and things going on across our country and things that are many things wrong. But Lord, help us to find out how to fix the wrongs without making more is what I would ask. I thank you, Lord, for our time here together tonight and uh, even the concerns that have come. We just pray that you would help us, Lord, to do the very best we can with what you've entrusted to us as a commission. And, and uh, Lord, we thank you for every citizen, for every, not just taxpayers, every citizen, Lord, from our smallest, youngest children all the way through to the oldest adults. Because, Lord, that's our community. That's who we work for and work with, live with, and have our being. So, Father, we thank you so much for what you've done. We thank you for the year that ended, uh, Lord, as far as our year. Uh, everything ended well, and we just praise you for what you've done. Father, we pray now that you would be with the leaders of our nation, the leaders of our, our states that are having some bad decisions, hard decisions to have to make concerning closing businesses and restaurants and churches and all those things. Lord, we're living in a time we never thought we'd see, but we're there now. So especially bless them tonight and our men and women in uniform uh, of all phases, Lord, whether it's right here in our own county, Lord, with our police and our sheriff's department, and our military people, those in harm's way across the nation and across the world, Lord, be with them tonight. Now, bless the remainder of our meeting. Let us do everything we can, Lord, to bring honor to you first. And hopefully, Lord, peace to our community and our county. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Robert. This is a regular meeting, a regular scheduled meeting with the Dade County Commission, Board of Commissioners, which takes place at the same time the first Thursday of every month. Proper notice this meeting was given to our legal order in Dade County has been posted in the hallway. Uh, at this time, I do need a roll call. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Hartline. Here. Mr. Goff. Here. Mr. Bradford. Here. And the chair is present. Thank you. All right. Mr. Lowry, you want to you start? Well, I'll give my report, report, report. It's going to be a little short and sweet on the... I'm going to have to hold this for a minute. It ain't going to work. My report on the E911... They're not broke up this month, but we had 4,014 E911 e calls to our dispatch center. Usually I'm able to break them up in law enforcement, which is the big total, fire, EMS, forestry, and so on. But we are going through a software update, and all I have is the 4,000 tonight. So I also would like to, and Robert may follow up on this. He usually does on on the legislative session. I don't know if he have you got stuff on that tonight. I don't have any, well nothing in particular. I have been reading what passed, but it's a hodgepodge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I picked out lead. some of the ones I wanted to talk about. So the legislative legislative session ended in on Friday, June the twenty sixth. It usually ends at the end of March, but because mm -hmm. of the COVID, it was drawn out this year. Now the first three I'm going to talk about are passed, but they're not necessarily signed by the governor yet. So one thing we all talk about, and Robert talks about it, I think as, as much as anybody is we're worried about when they say they're cutting their budget, it usually means they're going to cut our budget and expect us to man mandate us to still 
Feel it. So House Bill 793, despite cuts, funding for counties retained. The funding for key county issues were ultimately included. So that I felt like that was good news for us. I hope it's everything we think it is. So House uh, Senate Bill 359 passed the Georgia Pandemic Business Act. It provides liability coverage for businesses, healthcare, and local governments due to COVID-19. Base, basically, it's liability protection from lawsuits. Another uh, House bill that passed, 897, timber harvesting. Increases fines for harvesting that fail to notify counties. Also lets counties increase bonds to harvesters who have caused damage in the past. And it also had a note in there for our county attorney to to review our timber ordinance because of the changes. So. One thing we've been talking about for a while is that we've been interested in. It was House Bill 545. It was a revision to the right to farm. It was considered a hot potato issue. Nuisances and treatment of agriculture facilities, operations, and forest land. Basically, the revision would not allow any property owner a legal remedy for nuisance claims after two years of an agriculture operation. Current right to farm bill is if a farm operation is there first and someone moves in, buys property, or builds and then gets buyer's remorse, they have no legal recourse for nuisance. Small farm op operators band together and sent the governor, Brian Kemp, a letter stating that these changes would actually make way for massive agriculture operations at the expense of small farmers who have deep roots in Georgia, citing worries that large-scale producers could come in and disrupt their quality of life, and they also would have no legal recourse. If this version were to pass, our great agricultural economy, this state is known for, would be at risk because of selling out the small farmers. Georgia right to farm law has been in place since the 1980s and is working just fine. This revision would be an erosion of property rights for existing farmers and other rural property owners. Anytime you erode property rights, that is not good. April Lipscomb, senior attorney for Southeastern Environmental Law, called the bill still completely unnecessary. She noted that there had been no massive spikes in nuisance complaints that would justify changing Georgia's three-decade-old law. Others argued that the new revision would, retire, would introduce ambiguity into law and that could trigger more lawsuits and uncertainty. Now, April Lipscomb, she was the lady that sent us a letter from back when we were looking at the heavy use in industry ordinance. She wanted to make us aware that this revision to the right to farm law and how it could ne negatively impact Day County passed if we did not have an ordinance. Encouraging us to move forward with our ordinance to protect the citizens of Day County, she also mentioned that Senator Jeff Mullis was instrumental in stopping this last year. Now this year it did pass the Senate, it failed in the House, I don't know how Senator Mullis voted on it, but I will we'll be finding out. Okay. All right. That's good, good information, Lamar. Thank you. Mr. Hartland. As far as the sports complex, we're, we're working on the storm damage. They've got all the dugouts tore down. Got, I think got almost all the blocks put back up. Uh, we've still got some fence damage that they're working on. The fence company, they went to a bigger job. We missed them by about a week, so we're having to wait for them to get back. Um, we've purchased a new lawnmower what, a week ago, two weeks ago. About two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, we've got a lot of interest in tournaments coming up. We've just got to get the park put back together to where we can play and get through this COVID-19 stuff. <clears throat> That's all I've got as far as that goes. Okay, all right. Mr. Goff. Well, I want to say that uh, Commissioner 
Larry stole any thunder because he didn't, but I was going to say that the session has finally ended, and uh, we we will deal with some of that stuff, I'm sure. Some of it got a little better close to the end of it. Uh, the state's total percentage cuts went down just a little bit. Uh, but, you know, there's a, for instance, we got a, an email one, a couple of weeks ago from the tax commissioner's office. Yeah. Uh, and I mentioned TAVT, I know last time, that's the big one. And what did they do this year? They went back and they're still messing with that. But that's fixing to change on the percentage that goes to the cities, cities and the percentage that goes to the counties. But in the changing that, if a company has a fleet of vehicles, we do all the work in here, or they do in, in, in uh, Commissioner Moreland's office, uh, but we get nothing for it. We get no taxes from that fleet of vehicles, and it was estimated that that in itself cost the county about $27,000 in revenue. So that's kind of things that we're talking about when we talk about dealing with what Atlanta pushes out, and we don't have really any say in it when you talk about mandated and uh, where's Evan at funded and underfunded mandates uh, and because we just don't know what they're going to push down on us and hopefully it's not going to be as bad as it could have been. That being said, I, I have the greatest honor and privilege to say that uh, we're, we are in our first COVID month of really not the collections of splashed and lost pennies, but the first one affected by it and thank the good Lord, Splice was still $221,000. And I want to say thank you to the business owners in Dade County, to the store owners in Dade County, grocery stores, uh, uh, the, uh, the way that the restaurant stepped up and had the drive-through and all that because a lot more people were at home, a lot more people probably going out to eat and that kind of thing, and that kept that thing going to a large extent, I think was just the sale of groceries and the restaurants. So, and I know it's been hard on them. Uh, Larry York's been a friend of mine for a long time. Larry was able to open back up and actually on Sunday you dipped your own food. Uh, I don't know what will happen with that. His daughter works here. Uh, I hope that there's, there's not a setback on it, but you know, we keep listening to the numbers every day. Uh, Ted knows and everybody knows I've got a sore spot. The number never goes down. I don't know when and why we can't we can't tell the number of active cases and not continue to add to the, the overall because we don't have 65 cases, I don't think, in, in Dade County. But that's not my call. That's the state, uh, the health departments. But things really look good through that, and I am just tickled to death to report that. And also, uh, the election is over, but uh, Splash did pass about the same margin it usually does. Uh, if you want to know how that affects the county, in 2019, the calendar year, $2,657,628 of revenue came through here. We've got a still sitting board member on the school board here. When you look at that figure, that was also for the school board. $400,000, $500,000 in splash dollars that came through here uh, that are buying what you heard here tonight, sheriff's cars, school buses, all those things that are bought out of that that we've got to have anyway, and thank I, I'm thankful to the people of Dade County that saw that. We, we can talk about it now. We couldn't up until that point. Uh, we do still have, and I'll throw this in in hush, we still have an election. We've got a runoff election with the school board, with two people on the school board. We've got a runoff election for our state representative. So uh, runoffs are funny things. People say, I just want food we're going out. It's just as important as the first time around. So I urge people to get out and vote when it's time to vote. There will be early voting. You don't have to stand in line usually to do that. But uh, make it personal to you that you care about who ends up in those offices because they're going to be the people under a republic in which we live under that are going to make the rules and the, and for the next four years or whatever term that is. So uh, thank you, Dade County for the splash boat and thank you people for keeping us running business people and restaurants and all that that kept dade county moving good mr bradford i know mcdonald's had a great business since this all happened because nobody can go inside and eat but you can't go through the line uh we've been pretty busy in the in the county this month we had 381 work orders and and most of those are taken care of we had a few crazy things that happened all this rain things were going on and 
But Billy's got a real good crew and he keeps it up real well. And so you can call him and, and within the next day or so, he's out there and got it done. So uh, we have a good crew. But down at the transfer station, uh, I think people are still in this virus thing, they're cleaning up everything they've got and trying to get rid of it every month because it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. But uh, I had a lady call me the other day and she wanted to uh, congratulate us on our transfer station. She said she'd never been to a transfer station as good as ours. That made me feel good, and I've been spending a lot of time down there lately because we've had a couple of problems in the mornings, and so like on Saturday mornings, I try to go down and help the guys when they're down there. Also, if you need a job, we uh, we need someone at the transfer station to drive a trailer, and I think you have to have a CDL, right, Billy? Class A, Class a CDL uh, for this position. Uh, it's fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, and the only thing, a lot of people, when you tell them about the job, you tell them the position is from. You have to work on Saturday, that ends it. They say, oh, I'm not working on Saturday. But anyway, if you see someone or know someone, you can tell them to get a hold of us or come in the office and fill out uh, an application and see if we can't get them going. But I'm really uh, proud of our uh, road crew and our transfer station for things that they do. Now, I've had a rough month with this Lookout Lake. I know Ted and I both, it's just been, it's been out of hand. And out of those 238 people on that list that Melvin had, I think I've talked to at least every one of them two or three times. But anyway, maybe we can sell this thing, and, and I think we've got them to understand now that there's nothing we can do. It's over our heads, and uh, I would give anything if we just not touch it, but we have no choice but to do it. That's it. Okay, I'll get a report. Uh, it has been a kind of a different month this month. It's went by quick. It don't seem like it should be July the 4th, uh, but um, the meetings that I normally attend during the month, my Chief elected officials, CETA meeting and workforce development meetings. So they're doing them on Zoom now, on the uh, as as many people are, and and uh, it's kind of hard to get used to, uh, a little different. But uh, you know, as some of these meetings are mandatory, we have to have them. You know, uh, but uh, I just hope that's not our new. Uh, how was you said, Carrie? Our new normal. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's uh, the whole world's different. I mean, the way you get up and think and and things you do during the day, but uh, but. Uh, but that was uh, was different for the whole month. We did. Uh, we, this is the first month we really started having these back. Uh, the uh, one, I do want to mention too. The and I should have. I want to catch him before he left. But Larry Moore that was sitting back there in Mary. Larry Moore uh, and a lot of people, even a lot of young people, don't know who Larry Moore is. You think he's a funeral home uh, director? But let me tell you, Larry Moore is responsible for a lot of things that happen. Just kept. <clears throat> Uh, he actually, the four fields down here, he had the four uh, side or whatever you want to call to, and he took a lot of slack of this. Uh, he's the one that bought that property originally and built those fields down there uh, where the original four fields are at. Uh, you know, and that's that's big. I mean, if you, and Larry was always instrumental in growing in the youth, even after he graduated. I remember uh, we used to scrimmage some uh, when I played football in high school, and our senior year, Larry and some of the Young men that was had graduated a few years before decided they want to come over on Fridays and I mean Thursdays and Crent scrimmage with us and and uh, I mean it was it was not good they uh, they didn't re realize they weren't in shape they were back when they graduated but from that, those days I can remember Larry though and he really took interest when he was a sole commissioner here and uh, he he did he spent a lot of money though uh, you know on that complex but look what it is today and then we uh, as we came along and your dad and all we just added to it. So uh, that that man right there is uh, he, he brought a lot to Dade County, and not just that. There's a lot of things that Larry did as a sole commissioner. So, but I wish I'd thought you know and, and had him stand up. And know. there's hundreds and hundreds of children that, that yeah man that take advantage of that yeah. part. Exactly right. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, I just wanted to throw it in. It's not part of my report, but I want to. That's right. I'd forget it. Um, the um, the health department. Uh, I don't know where y'all came by. Some of you may have already been tested. Uh, the testing down here is we've been we say every day it's free and you know and all that and but here in the last three days um, trust me they've been earning their money the line out there today uh, was all the way out and around down to the road there uh, and, and I mean really people are really uh, getting tested and I, th I guess it's called all the publicity that's getting but that's what we want and that's what they're there for but I just want I want to say you know thank you to all those people down there those girls those ladies down there because they are really working hard uh, the hours that they do that and they do it you know they do it five days a week and they open up at one o'clock so uh, I, I want them to I want to publicly thank them for that 
Um, the um, lookout lake thing, you know, we, we, we're doing all we can do for that. We've already went through that. I wasn't sure how much we get to talk about. We talked about it a lot tonight. And uh, I assure you that we're doing everything right by law that we've got to do. But then on the water level, that's going to play itself out. And we're going to work with these people uh, out in the community all, uh, as, as far as close as we can uh, to get that back. Um, the, uh, I do have one other thing here, too. Uh, some of you don't know this. In fact, a lot of you probably don't know it. Um, but Buzz Franklin, uh, which is our uh, Hubert Buzz Franklin, uh, he's our district attorney. Um, yesterday, actually, uh, the last day of June was his last day. Buzz went ahead and resigned and went ahead and uh, retired. And um, he's having a retirement, or they are over in Walker County, a retirement uh, uh, for him, uh, a gathering, just kind of in and out. Uh, and it's going to be on July the 10th. It's on a Friday from 1 to 4. And those of you that know him or that happen to be able to just go in and say a few words to him, whether you like him or not. If you don't like him, I guess you can go and tell him you don't like him. But they're having it open to the public. You know, you can come in. And it's going to be over uh, at the Walker County Civic Center on Highway 27 over there. So it uh, does put a – I'm not sure uh, – I should have pulled this up before it came, but I'm not sure how many years – uh, what, 23 years? 23. Yeah, right there. See, it's right in front of him. I didn't even see it's in little letters, but 23 years of dedicated service uh, as our district attorney, and uh, we appreciate Buzz, but I didn't want to mention that uh, also. Um, I did attend uh, the, uh, we've had uh, two actually graduations. We had a, uh, the school board did this, and uh, all the teachers, they worked together on this. They had a military uh, graduation uh, uh, just a few weeks ago. And uh, for the people that were actually uh, our people that had actually are in the armed, armed, armed forces, and they were going to miss their graduation, so they did a special event over there. Appreciate y'all doing that. It was special. Uh, and I did go to graduation. Uh, some of y'all didn't know that, but at 9 o'clock the other morning, uh, they had a man. I mean, a great. that was a great turnout. The rain helped off. I was worried about that. I kept looking back in there because it kept, you could see it just coming in. But uh, I know all those kids appreciate that and uh, and uh, and the parents too. But it's special. I mean, special thing. And I understand. I don't know really you know about this or not, but they're going. To, they're working it out where they can uh, have a prom. I found out this morning. It's kind of, they can't do it by the Georgia, through the Georgia school system, but some of the teachers are working with them and they're helping them and they're going to actually, uh, you know, and they're going to be COVID friendly and all that stuff or whatever, but they're going to actually have a problem. And that, to a lot of people, they say, why are you? But, you know, that's special. That's a special night, special day for those kids, you know, or grown up, or young people. So, um, so I appreciate you as a school board member and all the school board members working uh, yeah, with that. It's very important yeah. to the school board about the problem because yeah. we had checked with folks that we kind of already knew what the answer would be. Right? Exa exactly. Right, and they already knew, but they have, yeah. they're, it's going to happen, and yeah. we feel very good about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those of you, know, this is uh, Jerome Bob. Well, you can't see, probably see the back of his head, but this, he's, he's a, one of our school board members. And uh, also Philip's wife. I almost, you know, she's I, actually, she's been on there for a while too. Uh, Philip Hartline, uh, Miss Hartline, she's uh, one of the board members. But uh, it, it, we all really have uh, been over backwards there and helped these, these people. We appreciate it so much. Uh, any, uh, any, y'all got anything else you want to add? Pretty well, I'd like to say at the military uh, graduation that Bob gave a great speech. Oh, I know. I, I, really, that was good. He's really good. You, you think he knew what he's doing, didn't he? You yeah. think he was? He showed right quick. He wasn't a rookie, that's for sure. Wasn't <laughs> Those six boys right now are probably running somewhere in basic. Yeah, that's something they won't forget because you you put it right at them. You put it those boys. That's something you know. You you. I could, I could was looking kind of at one, and he really opened his eyes. You could tell he kind of straightened up there and was listening because he, was, he realized, hey, it's a general. He's looking at me, and he's talking to me, telling me what's going on, what's going to go on. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, you've got to understand your audience, and I said, no, I yeah. want to talk to the kids. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm trying to focus Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll move on down then. Um, Mr. Alex Case. Are you here tonight? Alex was here. Yeah, he was our he was city of Trenton, uh, our mayor, and uh, also our EMA director, as all of you know. So, Alex, I'll turn it over to you there. Give two reports tonight. We'll start with the city of Trenton, and you was mentioning about the cars being lined up today. I just spoke with or got a message from Lindsay Ryan, one of the nurses, had 72 folks test today in four yeah. hours. Yeah. So it was backed up pretty good. We was worried about the intersection. Thank goodness school wasn't in. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yep. That's true. And uh, exactly what Robert and um, was talking about lost. Uh, the city received their lost tax, and it was forty-four thousand for the month of April. Um, March it was forty thousand, and February it was thirty. So it's been a trend moving up. And 
One of the biggest things I think that's helped us all in the whole state of Georgia, uh, Lamar was talking about some of the House bill, but House Bill 276 that passed uh, earlier in the year and went in effect April 1st was a marketplace facility law. All the online sales report sales tax to your counties and cities. Mm -hmm. And it generated over $38.5 million in April, and it will continue to grow as all the vendors keep slowly coming on, as a lot of us have reverted to online shopping. Like and Amazon. Things. Yep, all the online shopping of anything. So whatever your zip code is, I'm sure when you fill out your, uh, when you put your shipping address in of our five zip codes, that remittance tax that you pay will be, they send into the state of Georgia, and two months later we'll get it back. So. Uh, that's been a good blessing, I think, for all of us as some of the House bills continue to to move on. And another House bill that really showed some interest, GMA gives us the same reports I'm sure that y'all get as well. And one of these that really done me is we both, city and county, supply our courts. We fund our courts. It's a big ticket item in our budget every year. As a lot of folks know that some people pay on these court fines for years. And we used to be 10th in line of all those things. We've got moved to fourth in line. So that's easier that our money may come in sooner and not sometimes be. When you easier. say we, well, you're talking about county government county and city, city government. government. Yep. House Bill uh, 576 fine add on the priorities list of yep. how they're paid. So they're moving the cities and counties up on the priority list of fines to be paid. So that's something that we may see funds better that comes back in through our courts. So that was to the House bills besides the ones you had mentioned that I thought was very interesting that helps us both as things continue to move on. Um, City of Trenton, again, we, we did have our first full meeting last month. Uh, we will meet again this coming, uh, the second Monday of the month. Uh, we had a, the 1945 Days Committee met with us uh, in turning applications for the, the fairs at this Jenkins Park and due to the current restrictions when we had a special call meeting last month, uh, when the governor extended those restrictions onto us, they had to cancel that and we were able to, we had to deny the application for the event for the liability on the city and their taxpayers. So we really appreciate their effort and work and we were doing our part to do help with that facility. But, uh, you know, these folks just want to give something back to the community. And I think a few of them were here uh, that help with that. And it's something that hopefully by these things changing, it's just been a different time for us as well. We got to look for what's best uh, for our taxpayers. Uh, the city's been really busy. You know, you see the grass cutting and the clippings and the cleanings. Uh, we're still working just as hard. We've had some some pretty major sewer issues come in. That's just a continuing of an aging system that we have in our city with clay pipes and things. Uh, uh, we are uh, we're working really hard. We appreciate that. We the police department's been busy as well. We appreciate everybody that does. So I'm gonna turn my hat if you don't mind. Uh, you know, we've been talking about safe rooms for quite a while. We have finally uh, we'll hand these to y'all. I just want y'all to review these. Uh, this has been given through uh, the attorney. Uh, and this is a federal RFP right, thank you. that we've been working on. We've got Don, uh, Robin, myself, Ted. The same RFP is what we've done on our uh, in the past on our federal procurements and following the procurement process of our financial policy. Um, this grant that we talked about was we applied for this and was approved in 2015 of the grant. Not approved, but we turned the application in from the flooding that happened in our county. At the time when they opened mitigation funds up, a little bit of this is history, what we're trying to do, uh, they, say, they tell us what we can use that mitigation funding on. Uh, we applied for the first outdoor warning siren that sits here at the top of the hill right behind the administration building here. We got that one, and then the, the three to four storm shelters. Uh, it rocked on, rocked on. Well, we got another grant and put two more outdoor warning sirens in. Davis School, which is on top of the hill right before the arena on school property, and the Dade County Sports Complex down there by the, the uh, soccer fields by the stands. Well, uh, November of last year, we were finally given a letter that FEMA had approved this funding of a 1.2 million uh, with cost share divided between state, local, and federal. The federal's cost share is, uh, the total project is $1.276,290, $1,276,290. The FEMA share is $957,217.50. 
the state share is $127,629, and our local share be $191,443.40. Now this is three community storm shelters that we've been uh, worked on that's on county property and one is on school property uh, that will hold 216 folks. It's ADA compliant. Um, we looked at these quite a while before we turned the application in. We've done a preliminary application early and then once we said yes, you're going to get this, do the final. But the RFP, again, has been vetted before. Robin is uh, still checking through it. Don had some notes on it. Once they are, are good with it, uh, I did send a draft to uh, GEMA as well because they helped us look at it before we send it out to make sure the procurement is uh, processed so we're dealing with federal money. And uh, once we get it set and everybody's good with it, unless you have any uh, remarks or things, but uh, this is the one we've used the last two times for the outdoor warning sirens. Uh, the company that we worked with on the back as you get through the RFP is Modular Connections. They're built in Bessemer, Alabama. It was the buildings that we seen that DeKalb County, Alabama had some. Uh, they got a, I want to say it's almost a 500 person building sitting at Plainview High School whenever that school was damaged in the uh, tornadoes of 11. They put modular buildings up and they put that storm shelter there. Uh, as you know, the Corps of Engineers put that in because the state of Alabama was declared a little different than what we were. And working with the EMA director, uh, once the school got built, you know, the hallways are designed for shelters. They were going to tear the thing down. FEMA was. Luckily, they re reappropriated some uh, funds and the county bought that building back to leave there for a community shelter for the schools and for the community. So talking with him, we, we really like that building. And it's a solid precast building. Uh, it's it's going to be used for things for the community to use. It's just not going to be sitting there for storms. We want them to use it if they need it. Uh, if the fire departments or a community center or something, we'll work out arrangements to do it. But it'd have uh, heating and cooling, uh, men and women's restroom for ADA capability, and uh, backup generator power for things to be done. So. Again, again, we, we've talked about it before we went ahead to do the final application back a while, probably back in 15 to go with this, and it's coming to a point. Uh, we are going to have to ask for an extension on it, or we already have asked for an extension on it because we got to work with funding that is available. We fund this 100%, uh, send our payment request in, and we'll receive 85% back each time. So that's something that working with uh, Rebecca and Don and Ted says we do that. Uh, we we're going to do a lot of the work ourselves, the site work, the plumbing. Uh, we'll dig the footers. We'll work with local contractors as the once that we're approved and pick the vendor. There'll be a state certified stamp set of drawings. They're just preliminary drawings. Well, they are stamped and signed, but that's what they'll go with. So, just an update where we stand. Uh, now the process to get the RP out for a few weeks. We will also have to have hosted on the state's website for uh, RP. We we do on all of it. We have on the last two. Yeah. So that's just an update for y'all on that. And if there's any questions, please get with me. If you want to add or change anything, please let us know. But Alex, the uh, the work that we're going to be doing will be considered an in kind. The in kind match, yes, sir. So I can go toward our. It can. Everything that we do inside using, we'll have to use our FEMA rates. Right now, another thing we do, helping Billy and the guys. You know, we work as a team here, and these dispatchers help us out a lot. The guys fill out a work order. If they move a truck, pick up a tile or a load of gravel, they fill out a work order. We take that work order and we put it in our cartograph system, which is our public work software. All of our equipment is FEMA rated on the current rates. If they tell us to use the 2019 or 2020 FEMA rates, we adjust the rates of the vehicles. The trucks, the saws, the trailers, the bobcats, the, everything we touch and use. Even the saws we cut the trees with, we keep up with that. The guys do such a great job in public works of keeping up with that. We, ever since the tornadoes of 11, we've learned. We learn every year and we know what we do. But we take that and we'll show, show that cost of the equipment, we, the pay rate that we currently pay our folks in budget year and what they do, we will keep up with that through that work order. They do it every day. They're they're great at it. All the guys. If you see them out, that's. I'm calling Billy like the day after or the day of. We're hollering. And they were out there cutting trees. They right there and they'll tell me. There's Alex. There's probably four more tandem loads of, of uh, trees out here. We're writing that down. We done it in the last tornado we had. So, 
that's how we'll keep up with it in our software. All right. Any other questions for Alex? Good report. I yeah, we're going to try to do everything we can. Right. I mean, that's just what we're going to do to hope keep the less money. If you look back through the price of these buildings, that's on, on one of our list. It's again, it's been five, almost six years now since we priced this. The buildings have went up. Yeah. So I have mentioned that to our our, our uh, specialists on that. They did have an alternate building for us, possibly at the north end of the county at the old uh, North Dade School facility. That's the fourth alternate. They have told me that there may be money for that because other projects have fell off. Yep. If it is, and we come in with RFP and the price is matter, we will adjust that based on the RFP pricing. We'll send that up and ask for more in the facilities. Right now, we're probably ninety-five to 100000 short on the building estimate that we've done in fifteen. So again, as we know, things go up. Uh, so that's just in the building cost. So we got the exact locations where we're going to put these. Yes, sir. It had to be vetted. It has to be flooding. county property before county you county or school board. Yes. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. We had to do the flooding, the historical dig where they checked it and vetted and all that. Where's the one at Davis going? Bow. We don't have enough parking on the top of the hill where the siren is. You got to have be able to park. One of the things for the school is it can be used during the day when the kids are down there. The teachers have have it. You have restrooms. If we have an intruder issue that we work with in their safety and they've got kids on the bow, where are they going to go? They can go in a secured building. They've already got a small building there and they, we built that parking and built a track for the kids <coughs> and for them. We've been working with them. If they don't, if we've been preliminary talking. They gave us that corner property where the siren is, but that property falls off the back fast. And we're looking at what's best and plus help the school. You got a lot of kids down there at recess from all levels of things. If they catch a storm or something, or they got to go to the bathroom, they just go to the building. It's something we're wanting to let them use as well too, plus the community. Right. It does have a bulletproof rating on it too. Dude. Yes, I noticed that when I was looking through there. If you look at the precast buildings, you see at the phone buildings and the cell towers and stuff. That's what it is. It's four modules bolted together that bolt to the huge foundation that is dug in with a rebar, and they bolt them in. And they lay the top, and it's a big rubber roof, and it's anchored and bolted in. There is some options we've talked about to make it look nice to have the precast look like brick. You know, the precast modes, uh, that's about 12500 more per building to do that, so it would look really nice. We want them to look nice. A lot of the places I've looked at, they go back and brick veneer it. And he said, well, you could do this option, you could paint it later on or you could do stained concrete in that as well. So once we get close, uh, if y'all would like, and we could take a trip, the, the building sitting there at Plainview. If you ever go to Fort Payne, drive up the top, the mountain of Plainview where the big DeKalb County Arena, it's sitting between the arena and Plainview School. I think there's a six or eight modules bolted together. It's huge. And it's, it'll have so many square feet that FEMA allows for folks to be storm shelters. We could put more than 216 people in if you wanted to, but FEMA, Got to have five square foot per person based on FEMA rules. And this meets all the FEMA criteria that gave us this federal funding to do. Maybe that. social distancing will be over by then. I hope so. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you got <clears throat> stuff coming, that's yeah. what it is. But yeah. again, we've been working with Dr. Harris and uh, Josh on this for quite a while on the locations. If, we, if that's something that they don't want, because I've heard it may not, they may not want it there, but we're looking at the safety of the kids. Intruders is our things now, and that's a big thing. And plus, if they got to go to the restroom down there, they have to send them all the way back to the top and watch them. So that was one of the things that I think they like. So we're there to help them if they want to. Good report. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, uh, Miss Morshanna Sharp, Dade County Public Library, please. I just have a couple things. Um, of course, we're still doing summer reading, and um, we've been, you know, fairly busy. Uh, we are going to be opening on July the 11th, starting on Saturdays uh, from 10 to 2. So we've added that hour. The, we still will be open Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays from 10 to 6 right now. Um, and then Discovery Museum, Creative Discovery Museum in Chattanooga has partnered with us, and we need 25 students that want to do a program with them. It's going to be Zoom. They have the kits together. It's from grades 5th to 8th grade. Um, you will receive everything you need and they'll do four experiments with you and it's going to be on uh, 
uh, sustainability solutions, bioenergy and bioproducts, uh, finding renewed substance uh, sources of energy and critical is important in our nation's future. So they're gonna, they'll have the scientists on there and she'll be working with them and they'll be doing these experiments. So we need the first 25 that register will get the kits and um, they have several programs they wanna start doing with us. So if you have anybody from fifth, eighth grade that wants to be a future scientist, have them to call us. And we will um, set them up with the, the packet. And so let's okay. get right up. Marshanna. Thank you. Thank you. Marjana. Any questions? Marshanna. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I got a question for you. Yes. We got an email that said we had lost funding from the Dolly Parton Institute for buying like 500 books. Is that? Uh, Dade Family Connections. Um, mm -hmm. It goes through them oh, okay. on that. Um, we still have the forms. Uh, no one has told us that we couldn't pass them out. Um, we just so got an email know. said the funding wasn't going to be available. Yeah. yeah, that goes through Dade's Family Connections. We just kind of um, help give out, send out the information, but I haven't heard if it has. We did. Hear, we got an email that we were going to be our budgets was going to be cut. And we weren't going to be receiving any book money this year from the state. Then we got a call that we are we're getting it all back so good good so yeah all right. okay thank you good report next <laughs> miss sarah dyer uga extension <clears throat> thanks uh, so it's a pleasure to be back. I was really excited to see all the people that were here. Unfortunately, some of them have left, um, but I hope lots of folks are watching back home. Um, I'm Sarah Dyer. I'm the Agriculture and Natural Resource Extension Agent. Um, and I just wanted to start off with an update on where our office stands right now. Things are constantly changing, and that holds true for University of Georgia as well. I did. Is it dead? Would you click it, please? Thank you. Sorry about that. That's why I always bring a paper copy in case something doesn't work. <laughs> um, so right now, we are not doing any face-to-face -face group programming. So that includes our 4-H, as well as such as our adult programs, the Dade Grass class. We currently can't do those programs face-to-face -face with large groups, but we are doing one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so one-on-one -on -one consultations this month certainly picked up for me. Um, I was excited to kind of get out and enjoy this beautiful weather whenever it wasn't raining. Um, so for online meetings, that's how we're really reaching our 4-Hers at this time. Any of our, again, group programs we had going before COVID-19. Uh, we are accepting any soil forage test, any diagnostic testing we're still accepting into the office. You can bring those into the Ag Center um, and you'll be able to drop things off right there and I'll, I'll look at it and we'll get it sent off for you if needed. Uh, so we do still use our social media as well as our e-newsletters um, to reach clientele during this time. And this is another look at our Facebook pages. So we encourage you to go follow Day County UGA Extension and Day County 4-H. So the extension one is often geared towards um, adults or gardeners, farmers, things like that. And then our 4-H page is really focusing on a youth audience. Allison Henderson, our 4-H educator, has started a YouTube channel. I mentioned this last month, and it was only up for about a day at that point. Um, so I wanted to remind you all to go check that out. Any of the at-home activities that she's doing are being shared there so that they're always there as a database and a resource. Uh, again, I said one way that we're reaching our clientele is e-newsletters. Um, so I know this is something that lots of folks in Dade County um, don't necessarily want to use email. That's something different for us here versus some of my colleagues in other counties. Um, but if you do want to be added, we won't spam you. We won't do anything like that. Um, every other week, I send out one newsletter, and it encompasses all three legs of extension. So that includes agriculture and natural resources, 4-H, both of which we have present in Dade County. And then the leg that we actually don't have present here in the county is family and consumer sciences. So if you have um, canning coming up, things like that, there might be some information in that newsletter regarding that type of family and consumer science topic. 
day. So I said I was out in the field a lot more this month. Um, here's some diagnostic pictures I've received or took. Um, so gardening and fruit trees and blueberries questions really spiked. Um, people are outside right now. They're enjoying it. They're enjoying working in their gardens um, and seeing their harvest. Another um, set of hot topics is a lot of our folks are out in the hay fields. Um, so I would say about 99% of our um, county has done their first hay cutting. Philip, that's not what sure I was going to say. Have. I know one of them. That's why I put in 99% <laughs> for that. you. <laughs> Can't do that. Yeah, 99. Yeah. You one percent. <laughs> we'll give you a break. You've been out of town. <laughs> um, so anyway, a lot of folks have been calling me about what they can do in between hay cuttings. If it's a good idea to fertilize, a lot of our uh, folks. Um, grow tall fescue, which is a cool season perennial. So up here, we're kind of on that line as to if we can fertilize or not um, during the summertime because it's a cool season crop. As well as we also have corn and soybeans in the ground. So I'm not sure if some folks are aware of a lot of the row crops that we do have um, in Dade County. We have corn and soybeans in the ground at this time. For our 4-H activities online, we are mainly focusing on the road trip and across the USA summer series. Allison Henderson is doing a phenomenal job with this. They actually went through four different sections of the United States in the last month, and she has more up and coming. So she visited the West and the Midwest, and as you can see from these slides, she went through food and agricultural products from these places. Um, as well as the Southwest and the Northeast. And so she shares sites you don't wanna miss if you're going to visit these places. So if you're planning a family vacation after COVID-19, you're gonna to wanna to watch these videos because she'll tell you what foods to try, what sites to see. It's really an exciting thing for the kids to get involved with and learn about places outside of Dade County without actually leaving Dade County. We do want to congratulate our winner from the June Bingo Activity Board. So this was something that our 4-Hers could do a list of activities at home to win um, a drawing for a summer fun basket. And Miss Bella was our uh, winner for the June Bingo Activity. So we cannot do any face-to-face chick to chicken project day camps like we had planned where kids come in and learn about the chicks they have at home that they're raising that they got in May. Um, as well as later in the year, they would normally bring their birds in too. So we're not able to do that, but we did a virtual Zoom with them where they could show showcase their chicks. So you guys can see that um, the 4-Hers have really spent some time with their chicks at home. They've been bonding. They're looking like they're enjoying their time with their chicken project. The 4-H Youth Livestock Show Season is in full swing, uh, so believe it or not, there are folks and organizations that are hosting some events. Livestock shows are typically outside. There's a lot of space in between kids and other folks, so um, they were able to make it work. This was actually um, Philip Hartline's daughter, Lana Hartline. She showed lambs and goats last weekend in Coleman, Alabama, and she has recruited a classmate, so we will now officially double our program with a second showman, Miss Ella Hughes, will be showing goats this year. So as of right now, all meetings are canceled until further notice, and by meetings, I mean those big group meetings for uh, Tri-State Cattlemen's Beekeepers, and I believe Tree City at this time. Um, our day grass class is on a virtual format, so about only half of our folks are really able to tap into the resources of a USB drive and watching those videos online. So we're gonna have to figure something out when we get back to things. Just as a reminder, if you are a farmer in Dade County and you have products that you want to sell locally, you can go to um, the link that is in the bottom left corner of your screen and you can go ahead and put in your farm information. This is something that will go into a database for consumers to actually look at and decide, hey, what products are available around me and where can I go, who do I contact to purchase local products. We will advertise it on our Facebook page as an agricultural resource. Um, and then also, if you're just a consumer and you wanna buy local and support local farmers, you can go to the link on the bottom right-hand side of this screen. Again, this is a reminder, but this was very new last time. Um, so the USDA Farm Service Agency has released the details of the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program. This provides monetary relief to farmers who were negatively impacted by the pandemic. This application is open through August, so you have some time. And um, 
This is done through the Lafayette FSA office. This is not through our office. Just as a reminder, um, I've gotten some questions about some funds and grants and stuff this month. We don't offer any funds through extension, but I am a resource to tell you where to go for those. So Farm Service Agency in Lafayette um, is who this program is through. That's where you do your application. And we have lots of cattle farmers here in Dade County, and they qualify for this. So that's all I have, but I did want to make a few remarks. Um, Commissioner Lowry, thank you for bringing up the House Bill 545. There were two pieces of legislator that were pushed through, or I'd rather discussed, not pushed through, because House Bill 545 did fail. Um, but I wanted to bring those up for a moment, and I will be sure to include them in next month's um, presentation in detail. But House Bill 545, just as a background for everybody, it was it put forth in the House, then pushed through to the um, Senate, at that point, there was changes made, so it had to go back to the house, and that's where it failed due to the changes. So as a small farmer myself, we thought the initial bill was great. It protected small farmers. Um, Commissioner Lowry mentioned our agricultural industry in Georgia is $75 billion. But that's heavily made up of small farmers. So we're looking at ways, especially legislator, that we can do to protect small farmers. Um, House bill, excuse me, Senate Bill 211. This may be one that some of you guys didn't relate back to agriculture, but it had to do with food products. So Senate Bill 211 was a really good thing for agricultural producers. This ensured that there was truth in labeling alternate protein products. Um, so by that, basically if you see um, plant-based products or veggie products, veggie burgers, things like that, they had to discreetly say what the product was on the package. So we thought that was a good thing from a meat industry standpoint to not cons um, confuse our consumers as to what's true meat from an animal and what's plant-based protein. And it did pass. It actually passed in the House first. No, excuse me, went to the House after the Senate. I'm getting confused. Don't worry about that. But it passed with flying colors in both. I do know that. It was easily <laughs> agreed upon by many, many legislators. Any other questions? Any questions? Appreciate it. That's Thank you. Very, very informative. Appreciate all y'all do over there. All right. <clears throat> Donna Street's not here tonight. I don't see her. Uh, Mr. Back, I don't see him here tonight with our data economic development. But we do have Miss Jane Dixon. Yep. And she is <clears throat> representing our Alliance for Dade Incorporated. Uh, in parentheses, Chamber of Commerce. I'm sorry, what did you say? Go ahead. I was just talking about oh, you. Don't talk worry about okay. Well, I'm a farmer too, so I appreciate everything she said. Uh, I am accompanied tonight by three individuals from the Alliance for Dade. And the first thing we want to say to you all is to thank you. Thank you very much for uh, allowing us to be a part of this group of things that the county does. Thank you for being citizens that will come and listen to us and help move our community to a better place. Uh, we also have some congratulations, I guess, because we do have three of you all who will continue in this term. And I know that's difficult, that just that time knowing whether you're going to be here or not, but we're glad you're here. And so thank you for that. Um, the first thing we're going to talk to you about tonight is I'm going to introduce these people to you. Then each one of them is going to tell you a piece of the pie. The Alliance for Dade is an organization of a group of local volunteers who are managing now with the Welcome Center and the Chamber. Both of these two things are active. They will become very active in the near future, and we do appreciate all the help and the things that you all have already done and said about what we're doing. Um, I have with me board members and officers, uh, George Williams, and he is an officer with the Alliance for Dade. His wife, uh, Marcy, she is a, a director, and she's going to be giving you some information about a few of the things that we're doing. And our school board member, who is also one of our directors, his name is Bob Woods, if you don't know him. And I'll start right now with Bob's, and he's going to tell you just a few things, and then when they finish, they'll just kind of go right along and share at the end. If you have questions, please ask us, because uh, that helps us, helps us know what to do next, okay? Go ahead, Bob. Thank you, Jane. Gentlemen, 
Uh, since the last time Jane spoke with y'all, we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. And let me tell you what we've done since the last update. We have a mission statement for the Alliance. What does the Alliance do? We're here to promote business and tourism, to enhance economic and community development, and to serve as a catalyst for improving the overall quality of life in Dade County. Our name Alliance we developed that name, by the way, to show an alliance between all entities within the larger community. Not, not the mountains, not the valley, not north, not south. We wanted to align everyone, and that's where we're trying to do. With the memberships that we have and the volunteers that we have, we, had nine, we have nine committees that are very active, and they're doing the grunt work right now to make things happen. We have business services, finance, membership, publicity, signage, tourism, website slash face, Facebook, the Welcome Center Committee, and also economic development. So we have uh, methodologies and, and we're establishing protocols to make things happen for the Alliance. Yeah, we're lucky to have such a talented group of people who are willing to devote their time to this project and, and we're really excited about it. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Welcome Center. As you know, it's located on the square right next to Robin's office. Uh, it serves as the base for our Chamber of Commerce activities as well as the Regional Visitor Information Center to help promote tourism in Dade County. We're in the process of reviewing applications right now for a new Director of Operations who will be running the Welcome Center on Monday through Friday and for a part-time person to be there on Saturdays. It was never open on Saturday before, so we're going to be open for four hours on Saturdays for all those tourists who are here in Dade County over the weekend. Uh, if you well, take a little clue here from Commissioner Lowry about, um, I'm sorry, Commissioner, <laughs> about um, putting in a bid for, we are looking for an applicant here. Uh, we've received some, but we uh, are looking for someone to work Monday through Friday, 31 hours a week, and the salary there will be in the 10 to $12 range. Not quite as much as a transfer station, Mr. Bradford. <laughs> um, so uh, we're, we're Pleased to be ex and excited about renovating the Welcome Center. We've been doing some cleaning and painting there and looking forward to having it open on a regular basis soon. Good. Hey, last but not least, uh, I'm George Williams. I, uh, I'm vice president of the uh, Alliance for Dade. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, if you could see the work that's going on behind the scenes, uh, it's amazing. Uh, this group is meeting uh, virtually with Zoom uh, about every two weeks now because we want to keep ourselves focused. Uh, we're not jumping uh, out of the gate earlier than we need to because we want to make sure then when we, when we start the Alliance and when we start the Welcome Center again, we're going to be proud as a community that we're back in action. Um, I head up the membership committee. Uh, we have already developed a uh, fee schedule uh, for what we're going to call our investors in the Alliance for Dade. It's not going to be a member. You're going to be an investor in the Alliance for Dade. Uh, we have different benefit levels based on how big or how much your organization wants to contribute uh, to the Alliance. Uh, we're also reviewing uh, the past chamber information that we have so that we have a list of businesses, nonprofits, and other organizations in Dade County that we're going to pursue to become investors in our organization and in our county. Uh, we've already begun to assign to board members and directors uh, the names of companies or organizations that they're familiar with and they've agreed that when we're ready to go they're going to go out and call on these organizations and uh, a rough estimate is we have maybe 80 to 100 organizations identified so far we have about 50 of those with names beside them that are people that are going to call on them immediately um, we're actively developing a brand new website and one of the features of the website will be if you want to become a member of the Alliance, you can go right to our website and in fact pay through the website. We're probably going to be using uh, something similar to PayPal to do that. 
Um, and Marcy mentioned we're, we're going to soon open the Welcome Center. I wish I could give you a date, but we're not ready to do that yet. We have uh, received good, uh, at least about a dozen, Marcy, haven't we, uh, applicants that we're going to be looking at starting next week uh, and talking to those folks. So that's what's going on with the Alliance. Uh, and believe me, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. And we're going to be very happy one of these days to be able to come forward and say, hey, we've got a date out there, and we're going to have the Welcome Center open, and we're going to invite all of you. I don't know how we're going to do that with social distancing, but we're going to have a grand party when we, when we open it back up. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Appreciate all you do. I mean, I know Thank you all. Put a lot of work in, like you said, behind the scenes. I think I'll give them a hand. And for you all, uh, uh, Carrie is going to help us with our, when we get things ready to show you what's happening. How's that? She's going to help us make it call. She told me she's going to be what's called live. So we're excited about it, and we've got a lot of work to do before we're ready. But, I mean, we have done mounds and mounds of work in different committees and different officers and just different people who wanted to do something. All these people are volunteer citizens of our community, everyone who's helping. That's what's the good thing about it. None of us get anything out of it except the gratitude of that we're doing something in our community, we're active, we love being here, and we want to make it better and better. So our Welcome Center and our Chamber will be up and running in a way that you will be proud. Uh, we will have it fixed such that when people travel around here outside on the interstate, they will know how to find us, they will find us, and they will get good information from us. So if you need to know anything, ask any of them, because they're the people truly that are putting all this together, and we'll be glad to at any time answer questions or tell you what we're doing. But if it's okay with you all, we would like to return at your next meeting and do the same thing and kind of bring you up to where we are by then. We can't tell you, as George said, that whether or not we will have everything yet in motion. But once we get a person hired, we'll give us some time and we've got to get our, so our signage up our logos and lots of things, uh, but we would like to keep you all abreast of what we're doing every time, okay? That's so great. we'll be back next month if that's all right that's with good. you all. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. you. All right. Good report. Good news. Um, Becca, I'm going to turn it over to you to give us our financial report, please. Yes. Okay, um, this is uh, the account balance as of June 30th, 2020. Uh, general fund had a balance of $1,316,761. Uh, our certificates of deposit uh, had a balance of $1,002,494 for a total general fund balance of $2,319,255. The Federal Asset Fund U.S. Treasury had a balance of zero. The Sheriff Special Fund had a balance of $1,296. The Drug Abuse Education Fund had a balance of $32,036. The Supplemental Juvenile Services Fund had a balance of $26,537. The Victim Assistance Fund had a balance of $77. The Jail Fund had a balance of $46,946. The Federal Asset Fund Department of Justice had a zero balance. The Employees Flexible Spending Account had a balance of $35,490. And our payroll account had a balance of $17,659. Our uh, 2015 SPLOS Projects account had a balance of $105,647. And our SPLOS Debt Services account had a balance of $1,619,695. Uh, the next report is our general fund revenue and expense report uh, for the month of May and year to date as of May. Our actuals for the month of May for revenue is $435,441. Uh, our monthly budget was $477,687, and uh, w which we had a variance of $42,246. Um, our actual year to date was $10,079,667. Uh, 
and our actual budget year, I mean, sorry, our year to date budget was $10,075,587. The next page is your expenses. Uh, actual month to date was $766,634. Monthly budget was $842,414 with a variance of $75,780. So we were under budget. <coughs> And year to date, um, we've spent actual uh, $9,265,481. Our budget was $9,719,117. So we're actually under budget by $453,635. You'll have to skip over a couple pages, but I, next I wanted to uh, talk about our local option sales tax collection. <laughs> Uh, is $176,967.37 for the month of June. And SPLOST, we collected 220, or we received $221,218.43. And the last report is in the very back of the financials. It's the um, Tax Commissioner Office report for the year-to-date collection of our taxes. And so far, um, we have collected 95.51% of our budget, which was a collection of $4,557,838.47. That's all. Yeah. all right. Any questions, comments? Yeah. In the reasoning for, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> The loss tax, that 176000 is the county portion, and as um, Alex said when he was up here, their portion is the 44000 yep. So that's the difference. That's the split. And the reason why we actually get um, all the special purpose lockers option, uh, the SPLOST, easier to say, uh, sales that come in because they bonded their money in the uh, in this SPLOST, so they got all theirs up front. So that's okay. the difference, as you see. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, any questions or comments? <clears throat> if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve our financial report as presented by Becca. I have a motion. Make a motion. All right, I have a second. Uh, okay. I have a motion and I have a second. Call a vote. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Hartline? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. Mr. Bradford? Yes. And Mr. Chair votes yes. Okay. All right. Robin, you got anything uh, we need to go over? Any legal? I don't care. Stuff that we don't know about. Okay. And unfinished business, new business. Okay. The reading of the minutes of the last month's regular meeting, any special call meeting will not be required since all commissioners have been furnished copies. Uh, the minutes are public record and available for review in our county commission office. Uh, minutes are concluded and our consent agenda. This time, I ask Becca to go over our consent agenda, at which time I'll ask a motion to approve it. We have the approval of agenda um, as presented. Then we have the approval of the previous meeting minutes. We have the uh, review of the personnel status report. We have a board appointment of Mr. Alan Townsend to the special use permit board for a term expiring December 31st, 2021. Uh, we have approval of a SPLOST expense for the Davis Fire Department for extraction equipment from Georgia Fire and Rescue Supply for the amount of $10,096.52. And we also have the purchase of, for the Sheriff's Department, uh, from Jenkins Chrysler, a Ram 1500 Laramie crew cab truck in a total amount of uh, $51,718. And we have the purchase of a pursuit vehicle from Prater Ford, uh, an Explorer Police um, utility vehicle, a all-wheel drive. Uh, for a total price of $55,146.36. Uh, okay, let me see. We have approval of Resolution R-23-20, a declaration of surplus, surplus property, which is, let me get to the page. It's a 2008 lawnmower, a grasshopper. Um, and then we have uh, the first reading of ordinance 07-02-20, amending the ABC ordinance to permit Sunday sales off-premises consumption. And the first reading of ordinance 08-06-20, which amends the ABC ordinance to permit Sunday sales on-premises consumption. And that's the end of the consent agenda. Okay. All right. Any questions? Oh. 
Oh, Miss, okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve our consent agenda as presented. <coughs> I have a motion. Motion to approve. Okay. We have a second. Okay, we'll call a vote. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Hartline? Yes. Goff? Yes. Mr. Bradford? Yes. And chair votes yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Anyone will come up and talk to us tonight? We'll give you, as we said before, five minutes to uh, talk to us. If you got anything on your mind? It's been a lengthy meeting, and I appreciate everyone staying with us. And uh, you know, just uh, feels good here to be kind of back to normal. We're not, but we kind of are, you know. So, uh, no one. Uh, we don't have any executive session of so No one. Uh, you got anything else you want to say, commissioners? Nope. Okay. Oh, somebody over here. Um, I forgot to tell them. Um, the school was doing the lunches, and we were giving them out at the library. Well, they only did them in June, but the Trenton United Methodist Church is putting lunches together. So on Wednesdays from 12 to 2, we will be getting, so if anyone needs food, uh, they will be giving them out for children from 0 to 18. Okay. And um, they have breakfast, lunch. They have quite a bit. We gave out 143 last week, last Wednesday. But the whole month of July on Wednesdays, they can come by. And they, all they have to do is pull down the side of the library, pop their trunk. And some of the teachers, Heather um, Chance, and uh, some of them are, wa are walking out and putting the food in the That's on Wednesday? It's on Wednesdays from 12. Well, it's from 12 until we run out. Okay. Um, but we try to go to two. It's over at two if we still have them. But okay, that's good. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting. I have a Make motion. Make a motion to adjourn. All right. I have a second. Second. All right. Call a vote. Uh, Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Hartline. Yes. Mr. Kyle. Yes. Mr. Bradford. Yes. And chair votes yes. Uh, Y'all have a safe and uh, happy Fourth of July. Be careful out there and. Try to follow social distancing and wear your mask if possible. Meeting adjourned.